Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Hawk Talk Game Previews. Uh, this is Week 14, Seattle Seahawks at the Houston Texans, uh, and I'm here with Saket, and uh, we're going to start with the injury report. Yeah, so um, basically for this game, there were a couple uh, big, big-ish big injuries. Um, for the Seahawks, um, Travis Homer is out with a calf and hamstring injury, which he we should know we have he has been dealing with for a little bit now. Like the past couple of weeks, he's been like uh, dealing with that. Kyle Fuller is inactive again this week, as long as along with Brendan Shell. Um, so those are like pretty much two starters that are not going to be playing. Um, but I mean, uh, luckily it's against the Texans and it's not against the Rams. So we hope that they'll be back against the Rams game. Otherwise, Russell Wilson should get ex- should expect to go to the ground every other play. So um, other than that, for the Texans, um, Brandon Cooks is listed as questionable. I would say he's the star of their team this season. Uh, he's been like their only like sign of hope, I would say, pretty much uh, on offense. So for Texans fans, they probably hope that he's playing for the game uh, because you know without him, it's going to be tough. Um, all along with um, Jonathan uh, Gre- Grenard, uh, a defensive lineman for the Texans, who is not that bad. Uh, Kevin Pierre Lewis, a linebacker who is also um, a pretty decent linebacker for the Texans. He hasn't been doing, he's been doing pretty well recently. Um, And then Jimmy Moreland, the safety, or the cornerback, sorry, uh, is also questionable. So they don't have any big names on the inactive list, but they do have a couple of questionables. So we'll have to see how that goes. That's probably going to be a game day decision or like the game day morning decision. Uh, for the Texans. So yeah, uh, Santosh, do you want to get into the discussion piece? Yeah, uh, I mean, we can talk about like a couple of roster moves. Uh, Gavin Heslop got signed to the active roster this just this past week. Uh, it's probably good for secondary depth with Jamal Adams out for the season now. Uh, and then we also signed Edmund Robinson to the active roster. Uh, that's... Yeah for Travis Homer, the special deep special teams depth. And then uh, if we if the discussion piece. The oh, also is, Quandre Diggs is questionable. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mentioned that. Right, right, yeah, right. That's... Quandre Diggs. Uh, that part, I feel like we should rest Quandre Diggs for this week. Uh, we have Ryan Neal. I mean, Ryan Neal hasn't done that well this season, but I think that uh, he can do – I think he'll be good enough against the Texans and uh, – this we should just have Quandre rest this week so that he can come back uh, fully healthy against the Rams, which is a yeah. bigger game. I don't know if um I don't know if Marquise Blair is still on the team, but if he is, then I think he's on IR. Oh, he's is for... he? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember Marquise that. Marquise Blair um, is out for the season. Yeah, that's unfortunate because he he was he's not bad. Like he was actually a decent backup. Marquise Blair is a really talented player. <laughs> yeah. So many injuries, man. It sucks. Yeah, that's that's been pretty, like that's been a lot of the big storyline with the Seahawks this season. That's been one of the key reasons. Like obviously, Chris Carson was out, and then a lot of injuries to the defense. And now Quandre Diggs. I mean, not Quandre. Sorry, Jamal Adams is out. Um, you know, just a, a lot of injuries, and the offensive line hasn't been healthy since like early November. I would say. So it's it's yeah it's not great to see. But I mean, uh, before Brendan Shell was out, I feel like the offensive line was generally pretty healthy for the rest of the season. It was just we just weren't <laughs> executing on offense. I mean, our yeah. third on offense was pretty horrible. Uh, I mean, it got. I think we it was still pretty bad against the Niners, but yeah, it was better at least. Yeah, I, I mean, it's enough to get the win, but yeah. I feel like. That's but sometimes, the, like, especially against better teams, talk. yeah, especially against better teams, against, like, the Rams, that third down is not going to be enough. Um, and the Seahawks also got carried by field position, p- field positioning against the 49ers with, like, the defensive turnovers and whatnot. So, I mean, third down wasn't a key down. I mean, it was a key down, but it wasn't as big as normal games against the 49ers. So they definitely uh, didn't execute better. Yeah, I mean, that's like the number one thing that people just aren't talking about this season. I feel like, you know, people are going to blame Pete Carroll. People are going to blame Ken Norton, Shane Waldron. Blame whoever you want to blame. 
the offensive line, whatever, but the offense just has not got it done on third down. Uh, that could be a result of all those other things that accumulate up to that, whether that be play calling, whether that just be plain, you know, not enough time for Russell Wilson in the pocket. But even whenever he's had time, we've seen that most of the time that he's not even able to execute on third down, just looking for way too many big plays in the passing game. In the run game, we just haven't gotten anything on short. Uh, we haven't really had a run game this year. Uh, that's probably, I mean, except aside from like week one, we haven't really had a running game. That's uh, partly because Carson just never was, Carson just hasn't been on the field. Uh, and that that just hurts the team, right? So, uh, that, I mean, that's probably why te- teams just know what we're doing on third down. And uh, Shane Waldron, I think, did better with the play calling last game. Dwayne Eskridge uh, had his first, uh, you know, first game coming back. Not really his first game, but like his first impactful game coming back. And I think that uh, we're going to look for him next this game against the Texans, and he's going to be a good part too. So yeah. there's positives and negatives, but I feel like the third down is really something that we need to fix if we're going to win more games. Yeah, I also think uh, talking about Dwayne Eskridge, um, I think earlier th- earlier this week, I think DK Metcalf was on the injury list. I think he was listed as questionable or something. I don't know if like that was just me, but he was on the injury list. So like, that's like, something to watch out for. Maybe the Seahawks don't want to give him as many targets or something. So I think in, if something does happen to DK Metcalf, which – Hopefully DK doesn't. has been questionable for like a few weeks now. So yeah, I mean, maybe it's just like good. getting late into the season or whatever it is. But I mean, if something does happen, which we hope it doesn't, you know, Dwayne Eskridge, yeah, you, you'd love to see him produce in big situations. Like yeah, that. Lockett's fantasy value is definitely going up this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, but that's the thing though, right? Now we see this Texans passing defense is kind of middle of the pack. Uh, and even though it's something that's middle of the pack, it's actually a strength of their defense. It tells you how much worse the rest of their defense is, but it, yeah. we, it's something that we need to look at because our passing offense hasn't been that great. Yeah. Uh, and also, now, I think yeah. with the um, passing um, passing defense being good, because the CX have such little run game, especially with Travis Homer being out this week, uh, Adrian Peterson, who didn't do well, but I mean, he's still Adrian Peterson. It's just Alex Collins. Rashad Penny, uh, just a side note, has been having better weeks in practice. Um, he's been doing better. So maybe this is a breakout game for him or, you know. We, yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Penny, I feel like Penny's going to get a lot more touches this week. It's yeah. going to be mostly run game. It's going to be Pete Carroll trying to establish the run game with Justin Reed over the top. Justin Reed is a very, very underrated safety for the Texans. I do agree. I mean, he's been there he's been solid for like a few years now and people just don't talk about him because it's the texans but i mean yeah. if when justin reed is there and you have penny who who's looking to who want who needs a breakout game i feel yeah. like like just running the ball with penny i i wouldn't be opposed just in like run something efficient so easy yeah. stuff that we can get I, going on offense again i agree because i mean rashad penny has been dealing with injuries ever since you know, he came to Seattle, it was in 2018. So like three years ago, 2018, 2019. So it's been a couple years. And I think I, at the beginning of the season, I was just thinking like, if Rashad Penny can't stay healthy this season, maybe it's time for the Seahawks to move on with from him. I was actually wondering why they didn't do that earlier. Oh, yeah. Like last year and stuff, because he just like, why keep a player that's, that's, you know, not, not on the field. Taking up a roster spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you could like fill that up with someone possibly better. Uh, anyways, but yeah, I think especially I think he knows that Carlos Hyde. Maybe, yeah. Like who knows? Um, but I think he knows that. I think he has been doing well this season, well ish. When he gets the touches, he has been making the most of it. So maybe this is the, I think this is the the make it or break it game for him. If he doesn't, if he like does what we saw with Adrian Peterson last week uh, with like one and a half yards of carry that thing that that's pretty much it for him in the Seahawks. Uh, Adrian Peterson is also not playing this week. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's um, yeah. I think, I don't know why. I mean, the Seahawks probably just signed him for like touchdowns. Like, and like, I think like, no, yards. they signed him for, they signed him for veteran, veteran leadership and depth. Yeah, mm. that's true. I mean, yeah. I mean, who like, even if he doesn't play, having Adrian Peterson on your team, like you can, st- he still has a I mean, lot of. It definitely advice. motivated us. 
that. That's true. Yeah. And like, like he did uh, get that historic touchdown, like the Jim tying the Jim Brown for the touchdowns last week. So, I mean, I think the Seahawks, I think the Seahawks should probably try to get him like uh, later in the season, later if he plays, to try, try to get him a touchdown just so he can break the career, break that record. You know, I thought he plus, broke it. I thought he no, passed. He, he tied it. He tied the gym. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, mean, yeah, I think, work. yeah, I mean, if they, if he, he plays like one more game, he'll, he'll probably get it. So, you know, maybe he can retire with that under his belt, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, he'll probably sign like a one day contract with uh, Minnesota. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Just to retire as a Viking. Uh, that's 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 what I would do if I was Adrian Pearson. Like after the season, I mean, like this, we all know the Seahawks aren't going to keep him for more than this season. Like at the end of the season, it, it was like a Marshawn Lynch thing. Like it was just to come in for a couple of games, like just to like get the job done, and then the job's done. So then he's going to like leave, move on, and then yeah, I think he definitely should sign with the Vikings just to end his career there. That would be fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the defense. Like, uh, even if we have injuries, I feel like it's it's time that we like. Like, I think this is the game where we actually have to like start controlling the time of possession. Uh, for yeah. us, uh, we need to give this defense a bit of a rest because uh, week in and week out, we're just getting dominated by time of possession, and uh, that's third down and time of possession. Those are like the two two big things that we really need to focus on. But yeah, let's. Uh, what's your what's your score prediction? Yeah, so um, this game, I think, I'll I'll be extremely dis. I'll just put this out like the way I I see it. I'll be extremely disappointed if the Seahawks don't win this game. Like, I mean, come on, man, it's the Texans, like the two win team. How do you not win? But um, so yeah, I they they kind of have to win this game. Like, yeah. So um, you know, I think. This game, obviously, I do think they'll win. I think they'll win 28-14. to 14. I think it'll be a good day for the Seahawks offense. I think Russell Wilson will finally have – will finally get all of his confidence back. He got – I think he got 50% of the way there against the 49ers with that great game. I think if he just has one good day on offense with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, they'll have a lot more confidence. Their morale will be boosted for the Rams. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like talking about the Rams, I don't – I think we should – we shouldn't overlook the Texans game. Obviously it's the Texans, but like, there's still a game. Like it's still yeah, yeah. a football game. And yeah. it's still, I mean, if, if they do want to make any the, given Sunday, any given Sunday. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like if they're, they are trying to make like a, like a playoff push, there's a few percent chance. I'm pretty sure it was. They have to win every single there's game. There's a chance, man. Dude. I, I don't know. I'm just uh, saying, I'm just saying. They have to win six more, more games. Zero. That's, that's true. I will say that, but I have to win six more games against the Rams. They're throwing six more games against the Rams and the Cardinals again. I don't, hey, man, I'm just keeping whatever hope I have left. <laughs> That's true. And I'll keep in mind, if Russell Wilson loses one more game, he won't have a winning record in each of his seasons with the Seahawks. That's just oh, yeah. one thing. Um, yeah. He also he also lost another record this season with uh, playing in every starts, single Seahawks game. The consecutive starts, yeah, right? Yeah, consecutive starts, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyways, yeah. So yeah, uh, like I said, I think my score prediction would be twenty-eight to fourteen. Seahawks finally have um, a good day offensively, a good day defensively. Um, they got a lot. They get more, a lot more morale boost for the Rams game, and yeah, it should be a good Sunday. Yeah, I think uh, with Davis Mills starting at quarterback, I'd be disappointed if we let the Texans score more than ten points. Uh, so I would. My ideal score prediction would be something like thirty-one ten. Uh, if we lose, I will not be a Seahawks fan after this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, the stakes are on for the Seahawks. So. Man, you're gonna lose me as a fan. You better not. You yeah, better. Like, who, oh, I'm just Santosh. saying. Like, you definitely care about me, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's Santosh with like you know what is it like the three Twitter followers? Bro. He is the huge. The I don't even have Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't is even it? Have, Instagram uh, or like whatever it is. I don't even know, man. Yeah, you don't want to lose Santos as a fan, would you now? Of course not. Yeah, but um, anyways, there you have it. We think the Seahawks will win against the Texans. They better win against the Texans. Um, so yeah, uh, that should be it for today's Hawk Talk. Thank you guys so much for watching. The game is set for 10 a.m. PST um, against the Texans on Fox. So yeah, go Hawks. We hope they win. They better win. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Really okay, hope they you. win.
Yeah, thank you.